News 18 and you're watching the news with me, Poonam Burde. There's lots lined up for you on this edition. But let's get you started with the top story that we're tracking at this hour. And are we looking at electoral reform soon in the country? Well, the union law minister has dropped a big hint. Kiran Rijiju has now come out and stated that the government is in talks with the Election Commission to overhaul poll laws. He says that the centre is considering these major forms, reforms via amendments in the Representation of People's Act. Now, this comes in the backdrop of the Chief Election Commissioner writing a letter to Rijiju in September, about two weeks ago, proposing a cap on cash donations. The proposal had stated that the cap be brought to 20% or 20 crore rupees, whichever is lower. Anonymous donations will also be capped. It has been brought down from 20,000 rupees to 2,000 rupees. That was... The proposal of the Election Commission, they sought a nod from the central government. Two weeks after CNN News 18 told you about that particular letter that was written by the Election Commissioner to Union Law Minister Kiran Rijiju. Now the minister has dropped a big hint that perhaps the time has come for the country to see reformed electoral norms. Pallavi Ghosh, my colleague and senior editor, now joins us for more on this. Pallavi, this is significant. Well, uh, the law minister hasn't gone into details of what exactly these reforms are, but they definitely are on the anvil, he says. Yes, and in fact, this has been a huge proposal which the government has been making, I would say, for almost a year, that there is a very urgent need for electoral reforms. Transparency by political parties, uh, uh, voter-friendly kind of norms, and, you know, this whole culture of freebies. So I think what we are talking about now is the possibility of institutionalization of these poll reforms. When that happens, that remains to be seen. A couple of other issues, you know, uh, uh, simultaneous polls, that why do you waste so much of time and energy by... uh, having polls in different states at different point of time. This debate has also been there. Should the Lok Sabha elections also be held simultaneously as far as the state elections are concerned? Many state governments, for obvious reasons, have said no to it. So that's going to be a part of the entire poll process and poll reform. So very quickly, transparency as far as electoral funding is concerned, the entire freebie culture. And third is whether there's a possibility of simultaneous holding of state as well as Lok Sabha elections. Absolutely. The One Nation, One Poll idea has been uh, uh, in talks, Pallavi, for a very long time now. But there has been uh, a major, uh, uh, you know, a conversation as far as the opposition parties are also concerned of uh, the wherewithal mm. if all political parties would have to actually be able to uh, work for a general election as well as respective state elections together. So that has been in talks for a while now, but uh, it hasn't really worked out yet. So is that one of the reforms that we are also going to look at? That's something that people would want to know. Well, in fact, the Prime Minister in his earlier interview to us had made the point that one nation, one poll is something which is an urgent requirement. Because what happens is when you have, if you're in poll mode all the time, it hinders your development process because you go into a model code of conduct and therefore decisions which are urgent and need to be taken are not taken. But the problem over here is that what about those state governments, especially those which are ruled by the opposition? If they've still got some time to, uh, as far as their tenure goes, why would they go in for an early election? Also, if you would defer the election to keep pace with the national level elections, would that also throw up financial and administrative problems? So these are those nitty gritties, which of course needs to be sorted out. And third, and I think more objection is political problem because many opposition parties also made the point that the advantage of holding simultaneously polls usually goes to a party which is then in power at the center because they are going to be using that vantage position to the advantage to make inroads into states or to win in those states where they don't have that kind of a benefit. Absolutely. Now, as far as electoral reforms go, uh, the big push really, Pallavi, is as far as transparency is concerned, which is also why uh, in a bid to perhaps ensure that there is no... uh, black money that is used as far as donations are concerned, uh, a certain uh, level has been uh, proposed to be capped at is what the Election Commission had written in its letter to uh, Kiran Rijiju seeking for the centre's approval on that. And uh, that really is going to be a big push as far as black money is concerned. Now, we have seen the kind of reactions that have come to the fore from the opposition in the past of how the government had failed to deliver on its promise as far as crackdown on black money is concerned. So whether or not Opposition parties now come on board as far as uh, keeping black money out of the electoral process is concerned. It will be interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, I think the whole idea of electoral bonds, which was mooted by the then finance minister, Arun Jaitley, was precisely this. 
you know, every political party is, goes and subscribes to his electoral bonds and therefore it's going to be easy for the government to tap into and also trace where that money is really coming from. Second, there's also been a cap which has been proposed by the Election Commission on the amount a corporate sector can actually contribute to political parties. That's also supposed to be one way of ensuring that corporates do not use a funding of political parties' roots to turn their black money into white. And third, of course, we're talking about this entire freebie culture. If you look very carefully at the proposals which are put in by the Election Commission, the Yastik is not just to, uh, you know, kind of control unnecessarily freebies from promises which may not be fulfilled, but also to ensure that also trace the money to find out where the money is going to be coming from. And second is that, is this what's going to happen? Uh, will a party A, which has made a promise of a freebie in a state, poll bound state B, will actually use that money from the state in which they are in power by taxing the people of that state? And how fair is that? So these are the steps which have often been proposed by the Election Commission that under the table funding by political parties is something which really needs to be stopped. And if you look at the figures which are periodically given out by way of electoral bonds and how much of that has been subscribed, the EC has noted that to a certain extent they have been able to circumvent under the table payment to political parties by some in the corporate sector. Absolutely, and we're talking about freebies and I'd like to uh, give some context to our viewers. So stay on with me. It was just two days ago, in fact, that the Chief Election Commissioner had put out a proposal, a proposal that was given to all national and state parties, asking them to uh, not only just make promises as far as electoral promises are concerned, but also list out how they are going to be funding those promises, how they are going to be delivering on those particular freebie promises uh, that they uh, put out from their election podiums. Now, the political parties, especially in the opposition, have come out and said that the EC does not have this kind of mandate. The CPM, in fact, issued a statement opposing the move just this morning. They said that it's not the EC's job to regulate policy pronouncements and welfare measures that political parties promise to the people. The Grand Old Party's Manish Tiwari did came out, though, and posed a question in response. He asked, should parties and individuals not be accountable if they make outlandish promises for votes? And should the exchequer be bearing that kind of... Uh, expense just because the political party wanted to make certain promises so they could come to power. Now, these are some pertinent questions, Pallavi, isn't it? But it looks like opposition parties uh, are uniting to try and keep this promise out. Another reason why is because they think that, uh, or at least that's what they've been claiming, that a freebie and social welfare schemes are not the same. You can't equate the two. Well, I mean, when you remember when the Prime Minister first made his comment about the ravery culture, very strong reactions came in from the AAP and from the other opposition parties like the Congress and the TMC saying that, you know, what's for freebie according to you are actually development promises by the BJP. So they accused the Election Commission of being subservient to the BJP, the BJP, and they accused the BJP of controlling the EC and being selective in its outrage. They're saying that, you know, uh, when the government does it or when the BJP promises it, you say this is something which is being done for the welfare of the people. And when we do it, then it's dismissed off as a freebie. And the second thing, and I think it's a question which was raised by the former finance minister, Mr. Chidambaram, as well, saying how do you differentiate between the two? There may be welfare promises which are made and every political party has the right to do it. I think what the EC at this point of time is actually ensuring and trying to ensure it is that are these promises being made which are never ever going to be fulfilled? Are all these only poll time promises? Because they've also pointed out the instances of say a Punjab or of a Delhi government as well. Where the Aam Army Party has made the promises, they don't have the funds to finance those promises. And when they don't do it, then Delhi government takes money from Punjab and vice versa. And more importantly, Poonam, very quickly, is that they've gone to the extent of accusing the Ahmadi Party government at Delhi actually to indulging in these scams and this corruption because that's where the funding for these promises is coming from.